Hello, my name is Bella, and today I'll be reading from the book Power Through Metaphysics by Connie Mendes. Book 1, Metaphysics for Everyone, starting on page 20, The Mechanics of Thought. So it goes, awake or asleep, we spend 24 hours a day in unceasing thought. Like in an edited film, disconnected thoughts run through our minds, triggered by every sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, or experience. And a few of these thoughts we hold and examine more closely than the rest. Why is that? Well, it's because these few have stimulated some feeling within, whether a feeling of fear or repulsion, affection, or attraction. So it isn't the nature of the feeling, but the strength of it, the interest it holds. And so we concentrate on it, perhaps mention it to someone else. This is the repetition. This is the strength of the interest that leads a thought into the unconscious where it is engraved in memory. This is the process of meditation. Once an idea is etched into the subconscious, it becomes a reflex. Just as your leg jerks when the doctor taps it on the kneecap or when you experience a feeling, an attitude, a reaction, when one of those deeply engraved ideas is touched upon by some event or experience in your life. Your attitude reflects the original feeling you experienced when you first pondered that idea. In metaphysics, we call this a concept in the sense of a belief or conviction. The subconscious is incapable of discrimination. It does not think for itself. It cannot protest, nor does it have free will. It's only frustration or rather, its only function is to summon up a reflex according to a command from the sensory and emotional centers of the conscious mind. In this sense, it is a computer memory, even more complex than the most capacious data storage systems ever made. And it is just as emotionless as a computer. It has no sense of humor and makes no distinction between an order given jokingly or a serious command. If your nose is a bit larger than the standards of beauty call for, you may jokingly refer to it as a potato nose, a minor defense mechanism. But the humorless subconscious will attempt to carry out your command in its most literal sense to make your nose look more and more like your description. And soon it will. In other words, that repetition will soon make you see yourself as if you had a potato nose. To others, you will be, you'll unconsciously begin to hold your head in a certain way and repeat that certain phrase so often that others will begin to notice what had probably escaped their attention from the beginning. The word metaphysics means beyond the physical, and metaphysics is the science which deals with all undetectable by the physical senses. So anything beyond the physical. It gives reason to things we don't understand, the mysteries that surround us, all those things that seem to not have a reasonable explanation. Yet, as shrouded as the subject matter may be, metaphysics is a most precise science, a fact you will discover for yourself as you read on. Do you remember the first time you heard the phrase, catch a cold? Probably you were too young to remember, but your uh, subconscious does. It was said by your elders who taught you that a cold was something to be feared or at least avoided. And with repetition, 
you adopted their feelings. Never get your feet wet. Don't get caught in a draft. Stay away from people who are coughing, sneezing, or sniffling because soon you'll be doing the same. Little by little, this became engraved in your subconscious, forming a reflex. You never had to think about it to heed those warnings. The reflex did it for you and the damage was done because your subconscious will do its best to give you all the symptoms of a cold, whether you get caught in one of those cold catching situations or some people don't even need the situations. Once they hear about a bug that's going around, a tickle begins to bother them in the back of their throats. We know today that colds aren't caused by wet feet or open windows, but the idea is already there, firmly implanted and rooted to resist the firm tugs of reason. And radio and TV have done their best to nourish those erroneous roots. All the influences of your formative years have become reflexes such as this. And these are the automatic causes of all that is bad, all that is good that happens to you. These reflexes are your life pattern, a basement full of other people's ideas, which affect every facet of your life, body, soul, and mind. But the important point is that if you had not accepted these ideas, if you hadn't been pounded, if they hadn't been pounded into you like a nail into wood, If you had been able to exercise your free will, no germ or virus, no power on earth could have been able to make your subconscious react in any other way than the the way you wished. Your will, negative or positive, is the magnet that attracts those germs or viruses into your direction with a force far stronger than the actual circumstances of a germ-laden environment. Again, I stress, your negative or positive attitude towards the facts is what will determine the outcome for you. End of excerpt. So, so I'm not sure if you agree or if what I have provided in these two um, topics so far, so this being the second one, dynamic, um, sorry, the mechanics of thought. I don't know if you agree so far, but, you know, I was watching this other YouTuber the other day, and he talks about paradigm. Um... And I'll be more than happy to put his information on here because his name is Quasi. I think he goes by Quasi Quasi. Not sure. But he was talking about paradigm. And I believe that this is the same thing. In other words, when you believe so firmly on something that those memories get engraved or that idea gets engraved into your memory then you automatically react to it in whatever way you first ever reacted to it. And if if it wasn't explained differently or given another perspective, it, just plainly how you react to it is what determines the outcome. So in other words, if you see a bug um, and... You, for the first time, you see a bug and you've never heard anything negative or any type of description about this bug before. Chances are that you were simply look at this bug um, with curiosity. However, if those around you have a reaction that is negative to that bug, then you will always think of it in that way. And this is going back to when we're children and we haven't been conditioned, right? So, for example, that... Sorry, playing with my crystal. 
So, for example, um, that now is engraved in you and you'll always react the same way. So you truly believe, like in your world, you believe that that bug is something that brings you out of balance, that makes you scared, fearful, or disgusted, or whatever your reaction may be, or you simply get surprised, you, you feel like you need to protect yourself and pull back. So, if you truly believe that, then you, in essence, what this book is explaining is that you will attract that kind of um, situations to yourself. So, if you believe that everything that happens to you is good, and you never anticipate something unpleasant happening to you, then chances are that you will always experience something pleasant but if you walk it out out of your house every single day with the expectation that you might argue with someone or that you may run into some road rage or that you know the news is um something that you must watch every single day because they're reporting so many violent things sorry about the airplane noise but I'll go again so um sorry but the point is if, if you're always thinking a certain way then you are in essence creating that world for yourself I personally know that that is true I just went through an experience last year where and you know we're all in this we're all in this together and um, I went through an experience last year where you know first um, there was a, like an emergency within my family and that kind of set things in motion from a financial perspective from an emotional perspective and the day before that happened uh, the landlord where I lived asked me to vacate the premises by a certain amount of time which was you know like two three months away however as um, as you well may know if you're in the United States then housing or uh, renting an apartment uh, renting a place can be difficult sometimes see that was my belief that was my paradigm and instead of turning around and saying God's got me I trust and I believe I know that my family and I will be okay and will be safe. I resorted to freaking out. And I felt pressed for time. And um, I kept thinking the insurance is not going to pay for my car. I kept thinking it's not going to, it's going to take forever to get my car back. And what if they don't pay for it? Um, sorry, because there was an accident in my car. Uh, but the point is that when I decided to stop worrying, to stop thinking in that manner, and to focus on God instead, my whole paradigm changed. And at that point, I had 15 days left to find the place. And I did. And it was very convenient. And it was within my budget. And it, it was what I needed at the time that I needed it. So what I did, if, if you must know, is that I, or if you would like to know, 
what I did is that I picked up my my phone and I started listening to The Secret Place by uh, Dr. Emmett Fox and basically it's a treatment where it, it asks you to or it explains Psalms 91 and how to use it as a treatment but it also goes along with most of the teachings that are in this book and specifically in power um, metaphysics for everyone the book one within power through metaphysics which is a lot of um, a lot of topics from Dr. Emmett Fox and I think is a power of verbalization which is another way or the golden key Or the golden key. So the golden key says, if you ever find yourself in trouble, if you find yourself in need to get out of a situation, whatever the case may be, bring the problem situation forth. Have it in focus for a moment. And then simply give it to God and say, God, here it is. I give this to you. I can no longer worry about this. I choose to think of you instead. So you give your problem to God. Give your bank account to God. And then just think of him or pick up your phone and get on YouTube and search for Great Heart Sage uh, and listen to one of the topics what is love dynamic Christianity uh, the mechanics of thought and next will be the infallible formula but pick that up pick, pick up your phone and listen to encouraging motivational words something that will keep you focused on God on goodness on health prosperity if the Buddha says what you think you become if we're told by God asking you shall receive and if it's true that when we repeat something so much it's a form of meditation and it gets engraved into your memory and it manifests that means that doing this focusing on God feeding your, your spirit with the fruits of the spirit like I mentioned Galatians 22 you will see your life change for the better life will become easier love will become easier goodness will be abundant prosperity i am thankful to god for my blessings And I trust and believe that he is blessing you as well. Whether you follow this or not, we're always being blessed. If you feel there's something in your life that you need to change, then again I stress your negative or positive attitude 
towards the facts is what will determine the outcome for you. Thank you so much. <laughs>